couple of years ago, I did a review and unboxing for the Titanium 125, and I figured it'd be a great time to go over all of the questions you guys had about this guy. So let's dive right into those questions. Can you MIG weld with this machine? And that is no, this is a flux core only machine. Uh, MIG welding is when you have gas and it's just a solid core wire. Can you change the polarity? No, and that's because you don't need to because it's flux core only. When you MIG weld, you actually have to change the polarity or you have to change what is your ground and what's your positive electrode. Can you do aluminum? And that is no. Again, man, kind of a bunch of no's for this guy off the bat. But no, you can't do aluminum. Why is that? It's because aluminum, you need what's called a spool gun. Since we can't take off the leads or change polarity or add gas, you can't do aluminum. Second question to go along with that is, what about stainless steel? Now, there's a lot to be said about stainless steel. Some people say, oh no, you can't weld stainless steel with flux or with or to, onto steel. Well, yes and no. Yes, you actually can weld stainless to steel, but the drawback is corrosion. This next one is probably the most common question I've gotten out of all of my welding videos combined, and it's, do I really need the 20 amp breaker? The short answer is yes. The long answer is kind of. And that's because if you want to weld at the max settings, like all the way up doing the thickest material, yes, you have to have a 20 amp breaker because the 15, it will trip. Trust me, I've done it. If you're fine welding down, probably I would say in the middle range and below, then no, they will run just fine on a 15 amp breaker. So yes and no. What is the maximum thickness? And I'll do twofold on this, the maximum and minimum. So the maximum it says is 3 16 and I actually believe that. I've done some 3 16 Now the minimum, it does say 18 gauge. Uh, now I actually will tell you I've done 20 gauge, but that was just done by spot welding and then you kind of have to go through and do stitch welding after that. Now the next one that rolls into that is can it do an exhaust pipe? Yeah, no issues because the typical thickness of exhaust pipe is around 18 gauge or 16 gauge. So it's even thicker. Um, yep, no problem doing that. The hardest part will be is that you're doing around a diameter or a pipe. The next question I think ties in because of the portability of this guy. And the question is, can you use an extension cord? Well, short answer, yes, of course you can. Uh, long answer is no, you can't necessarily use any extension cord. It needs to be a heavy duty, I would say 12 gauge or 10 gauge extension cord, obviously depending on the length. Now, one awesome thing about the titanium is the power cord is on the back. And so that actually gives you about a two feet because if you think about it, the ones that come out the front usually have to go curl around to the back to where your outlet is because typically you put it on your bench, you just plug it in and then you go out to your workpiece. So with it being on the back, it gives you that much extra stretch like that about the titanium. What consumables do I get and what do I need with this machine? Well, the awesome thing about a flux core welder is it is very simple. You pretty much need wire and well, that's it to get you going. And then consumables, things that you use up. Um, I would say not the nozzle. I've, I've never gone through or burnt through any of the nozzles. Uh, they do give you an extra tip. Um, an 030 tip and this would probably say this and your wire are the only consumables that you need This has some forney uh, wire in it. Um, I kind of really go with whatever's on sale for wire Next up is duty cycles. So this has a 30% duty cycle at 90 amps So that means if you're running 90 amps it can run for three minutes and then has to rest and then has to rest for seven minutes what is that blue stuff that I see you dipping your nozzle into? Well, it's nozzle gel. And that is the reason why this is still the same tip that I started with. It's because I, well, you're pretty much putting a lubricant on it. So with flux core welding, there's lots of spatter, splatter, whatever you want to call it. And what does that do? Well, it gets onto your workpiece, but it also gets onto the tip and onto the nozzle. After time, it starts to build up and then your nozzle gets clogged and then you pretty much have to switch it out. So if you start by dipping it in from the very beginning and anytime there's just a little buildup or spatter, just get your wire brush, clean it off. All of it will just come right off and you pretty much got a brand new weld. 
And last but not least, something that I did not mention in my review video that I've gotten a bunch of comments on are, hey, there's a cold wire feed button on the back. Why didn't you read the instructions and use that? So if you're starting out with a new roll, instead of pulling the trigger to feed the wire, you can actually just push this button and it spins the rollers and shoots out your wire. So for a MIG machine, as you pull the trigger, you're actually releasing gas. So that actually doesn't sound like a too bad of an idea, right? Foot's core, you don't have gas. What's the harm in pulling the trigger? Well, I'll let you decide if it's worth it or not, okay? Well, that about does it for this review, overview, revamp. I don't know what you want to call it, but the bottom line is I would go buy a new one if it broke today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.